Hi, everybody. I'm Steve Scott, and welcome to another episode of Judo Analysis. In this episode, I'm going to take a, a pretty close look at Sumige Ishii, and part of it's going to be in its differences between Sumige Ishii and Hikomi Geishi. They're, they're two techniques that are very similar, and they're often confused with each other. So the first part of the video is going to be examining that. Then we're going to look at some other applications of Sumi Geishi that I like to practice. There are a lot of them, uh, but these are some that uh, I like to practice and work with my guys. So anyway, here we go on Sumi Geishi, which, by the way, means corner, reverse, angle, backward roll, a counter counterclockwise type roll. So it's a reverse rolling from the corner angle. So you'll see what it means when we get to Sumi Geishi. So here we go. Okay, this is my setup grip. Okay, so my left hand on here, my right hand up here in about the middle of the back. Okay, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to step in, step it across his body. This is coming at his corner. That's why it's called a corner counter. There, there are different. There's another throw called, you know, Kobe Gaishi. That's a different one, but you roll him straight back. This one's over his corner. Okay, that's why it's called a corner counter. Okay, so here we go. And what I'm going to do is just. In this position and step in here with my left foot as I do that, I jam my foot here. That's an important thing. Jam your foot. I'm gonna have those guys do it here in a second. But when you do that, it's across his body. See that? Like this, across the body, and I sit and roll it backward. Which one do you guys want to do it? You want to do it? Now, now watch, it comes from the side. This is why it's from the corner. See, it's a corner angle. That's really important here. Okay, see the cross grip? Now, there are other ways to do your hands, but we're just showing a cross grip version tonight. It's a really effective. See the back grip here? This is going to be pulling him backward. You'll see that in a moment. When Mike steps in, he steps across his body and he gives a nice big step. Now, if you guys can come around and see this, Mike can jam his foot up. See that jam right up there? That was way. All right, now he's just going to sit on his buttocks and roll across his back right over on top of, we like to go right over on top of the guy because we want to set him up for some kind of a, a ground fight. You know, so arm lock, whatever it may be, we want to get on top of it. Let's look at it again. Comes across, jams the foot in, rolls back, comes right on top. Now you can do this without landing on top of the guy, but it really does help if you do. And you, you basically put yourself in a big ball. That's what you do, and you bring him along for the ride. That's really what it is. One more time, so let's look. He's, the, the setup is here. Now, can you see this now? When Mike does this, fix his gear. See how he steps in? Come out really front of the You might be fighting for a grip or whatever, and there you go. Now, see that space? He fills that up with his foot, steps back in, sits, comes right up. Okay, that's corner counter. Assuming you guys see, you like to finish with that because you're on top of him, you can pin him, or you can go right to the juji, which is the perfect situation. Okay, now a lot of guys are going to get you a lot of guys get kind of fancy here, okay? You know, they try to do all kinds of stuff. That's cool. You know, like if he doesn't have a gi on, I'm going to have to figure out a way to hook him in like a no situation. But he's got this great jacket that I can use to manipulate him. Okay, so when we're fighting and everything, I'm going to get this grip and I'm going to get to his outside corners. I'm going to get to the outside of his body here. If I stand here in front of him, I can do this for all get He can scoop me. So I want to get the outside of it where I can get a better angle so I can have a better edge on the attack. Okay, so when I come in here, I come sideways out here like this. As soon as I do it, snap it up here and get your key. This is important. Now what will happen is you step into him. See that across? It sucks him in tight. See how I pull it into my torso here? Like this, and my elbow is down. That's what these guys are doing here. And then jam right there. Now when you jam, your foot is across there. Don't let, the, don't let that hang. This, normally, we point our toe down like it throws. This is one time where I want to hook it, I want to hook it like this, like that. And that hook helps 
catch his thigh and it rolled him backwards. And I want to squat, let me squat on my buttocks, go down and roll a nice tight little ball. Okay? You have to put him down here because. Right on top. So that's how it looks in action. Okay? I'm going to give you one more time. So to turn on so we can angle it. Okay. He steps across, sits, and then on top. That's sumigation. Corner, backward roll, corner counter, counter moving ball. So that it's really not that hard of a throw, and it's a very, very tricky throw. Now a lot of guys, one thing about tactics, if we're fighting here like this, and I'm all bent over like this, he thinks I'm kind of defensive. But really I'm not at this point. I'm just setting him up. If I'm trying to make some space here, if I do this straight, it's kind of tough for me to come. I could, but it's kind of tougher for me. And I need to back out a little bit and step in and catch it. And it closes that gap. Make sense, everybody? And whether it's tall guys, short guys, I always said this was the tall man Tomoanagi circle throw. Because, you know, circle throw is great if you're shorter, uh, but I never had success with it because I was always like a really tall guy. But this, this could be suited to anybody in height. So more Nike works, I'm just saying yeah, this works better for me. All right, let's try that. Okay, let's give it a go. In fact, you want to teach you, go ahead. Why don't you, why don't you show us? Cool. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to still have the same grips that we had before. So we've got a big you know, German snow grip right there on the, around the shoulder, right next to where his scapula is, and drop the elbow. Our other hand comes in over the other arm and grabs the lapel. Tighten your elbows in to package them up nicely. And before, where we would turn in like this and catch with your left leg before spinning into it, this time we're going to go left leg first steps across, right leg catches, and then we're going to come back around. Remember, we're not going just sideways that way. We're coming in in a turning step and catching so we can still throw them at about a 90 degree, give or take. One thing you're doing, guys, when he comes in, he steps in. See how this is a spinning step in? Now, when he jams that right, see that right shin here on Mike's right shin, very tight. There's going to be a little more body space than the other application. So it's a little, a little further out. But Derek, what he does is he's going to sit down and he's going to roll across his right buttocks, right over. See that? So watch him how he does get. So it's more of a spinning application is what you're doing. See, so show me the other way is the contrast. The other one was a little more a direct line. On the entry, direct line on the entry. This one is a more turn into the end. Did you see? It's a subtlety, but it really makes it feel different. Yeah. yeah, it makes it different. You're still going to face the guy for the most part when you come in. So remember, if you come in and you're, you know, facing this way, it's not going to work very well. He's probably going to pick you up and shut you. So you have to come in and turn that foot into him, catch him with the foot. Okay, begin flex the foot, so you catch right on the upper part of the thigh, sit straight down on your heels, and then pull and turn. And again, this is not just a good throw, it's transition to ground fight. He goes directly into a controlling position. He has a control at the end, and that's how he finishes through. Show that one more time on the, uh, when, you, when you're stepping in, uh, notice the injury, see this step in here? That's the spin, okay? Now, he's attacking this foot and this whole leg. There it is there. And now he's gonna, he's really close up here. Now they're kind of like one big person, okay, hooked together. And he sits down and he rolls over the right buttocks. That's right in. And then this is a pretty good application of a commigation. You pull down, reverse direction throw. If you're having trouble transitioning into the pin, it's because your hands are too far out here. Suck them in tight, okay? Definitely using sambo grips here, short grips. Collapse those elbows down the top of his arms as you're stepping in, and he will literally like roll you into it and you'll just land right in. Yeah, a lot of guys who have really good classical judo training, nothing wrong with that. This is kind of the opposite of that. Because yeah. what you don't want to do is come and pull up and step in and do this stuff. You gotta hug him to you. 
you know, and this is what we call a shorter grip, especially with the shoulders here. Show that again. You're going to suck them into you where you're big, one big hunk of people. You're the same connected to them very tightly. Thank you so much. And again, it's, it's great. Well, he gets a lot of air time, the feet are flying and everything, but you stay on him so roll around on top of him and finish at the end. Really natural combination because what you're doing is using his momentum and movement to defeat him. He hops away and you really change directions. Okay, so it's a really change direction uh, combination throw as opposed to a continuation. So he comes, hops. Now, some of you may like Tomonagi, but we found really that Sumigeshi works so well because once you use that right leg to come out and he, you, you, you're trying to hook him with your right leg, so do it real slow there. See how I hook, and he hops away, plant, and you can come in and hook that leg in just as easily there. And you set in and you roll back and toss him. So it's real. Let's do that again. So it's a cross body, Osoto. He hops away, gets away, step. Now, did you guys notice he had to put his foot on the mat? So Derek was attacking with his right leg. But he had to reset basically to get his balance. And this is, you will do this, you'll do it quick. Hops, steps, step in, and you shoot the move. And so don't try to keep your foot flailing around up in the air. It doesn't work that way. Okay? I'll just do one more and then we'll let you guys practice. So you just go crossbody, Osoto, he hops away, steps in, boom. You can do this. I'm, I'm putting you on the spot, but you've done it before in competitions. A Kouchi and he steps away. So if you if you want to play with that. So Derek may hit a Kouchi and he hops away and set up like that. So some of you guys like that inside leg trip, Kouchi, Gari, Minor, Inner, Reap. Uh, you might want to try that. So I'll show that one more time if the guys do want to practice it. And we'll have it here. So Kouchi. And see the, the same principles apply, everybody, is because after he tried that Kochi, he didn't just leave it in the air and swing around with it. He planted and he used it now as his attacking leg again. He kind of doubled up on his attacking leg. One more time, Kochi to Sumigeshi, then we'll, we'll let you off the hook. Kochi, Sumigeshi. There you go. So it's a real nice fluid combination technique of one throw, one specific throw into another specific throw, and actually changing directions. So in this case, instead of a lateral or side direction, and then you switch into a really rear direction. Okay, wanna try it? Okay, guys, what we're going to do here is a uh, snap down, or you could fake a foot throw, whatever. The point is, Derek wants to get Eric down on his elbows and knees. And when he does, he's going to do a really neat sumigeishi corner counter throw. Again, this is a good sambo throw, but you can adapt it to any jacket sport. Now, in this case, you will need a jacket. So what I'm going to have you do, Derek, Derek, can you guys turn around a bit so you get there, that angle there. So Derek is going to snap him down, so pull him down. Why don't you fake it out like you do a fake a foot sweep, you know, so make it look, you know, semi-legal, like boom, okay, that's good enough right there. Now, what's going to happen as soon as he's down? You notice Derek had his right hand on the lapel, left hand on the sleeve, kind of a standard, you know, kumikata grip. But now what he's going to do, he's going to quickly switch his grip. So with his left hand, he's going to grab, grab with his left hand right there at the top of the collar by the head. See that grip? His right hand's going to grab the belt. Okay, so you see the grip there? 
So he snapped him down and he got that grip immediately. So let's look at that. Let's, let's parse that out. Can you do that again for me? I'll get it from this angle. So he snaps him down. Bam. Okay, now he quickly switches grip. Grip and grip. Now, what we're going to come is this. Now, watch Derek's left foot. He's going to step between the elbow and the knee of Eric. See how he stepped in? Okay, now with his right foot, he's going to slide that in and, and he's going to really roll back into a sumi geishi. So kind of watch, and this is why we do our break falls, guys. So we're going to step in and go, roll him right over, slam over, finish him. Guys, when we're doing this um, sumi geishi off the knees, corner counter off the knees, if he comes high in parterre, this is particularly good against him because he's, Eric on the bottom is giving Derek a lot of room there. Notice the arms are nice and straight. Now, if he were down on elbows and knees like we did earlier, it's a little more difficult to get, okay? But a lot of guys, they go parterre. If you've knocked them down, so Derek, just go ahead and knock him down. He comes down on hands and knees, basically. Even an untrained guy or a wrestler will be, no, no, do yeah, there you go. So let's do it again. Where he comes just on the, just on the hands, yes. <laughs> so pops him down. <laughs> on the hand, well, okay, we'll, just, we'll live with it. So he's there, okay? Now you can see Derek's got more room to attack. And this is, my, look at that room. So he grabs the, yeah, like got a big hole there. So there he grabs it, he steps in, and he can throw him actually with even more force because, you know, uh, he's got a lot of room to throw the guy. So go ahead and toss him if you want to, right? So you can see it's easier if the guy is on elbows and knees and parterre. That's why we say, if you're the bottom guy, you know you've been had, realize the situation, don't go high like that because things like this will happen to you, okay? You've given him too much room to operate and throw you and, and manipulate your body. So as he hands up and then he steps in there and you can see, and it's look, that looks almost like a standing sumigeshi or corner counter throw.